there, this is board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan, and I am back with another episode of I Care For Your Brain. Tonight's topic is post-stroke dizziness. This can be a debilitating symptom that affects about 80% of people who have stroke in specific parts of the brain, namely brainstem, pons and medulla, and the cerebellum. It's often described as a feeling of internal spinning and is commonly part of a broader condition called vertigo, which may also include times of nausea, headache, weakness, and fatigue. Why is this symptom so important to treat? Well, it reduces quality of life. It makes it harder to do your therapy exercises if you feel like your equilibrium is off. It makes it difficult to return to the activities of your life, things like driving and working. It also decreases our ability to be social. If we don't feel stable and steady within our own body, it's very hard to have enough attention to give to things like conversation or engaging in other cognitive tasks. We also know that it can imp increase things like anxiety and depression. It increases your fall risk, which then could increase your likelihood of having a traumatic brain injury on top of a stroke, which will certainly complicate your recovery and make it much harder for you to get back to doing the things that you've always enjoyed. And it also encourages a sedentary lifestyle. This is one of the biggest concerns because we know that exercise is probably the biggest evidence-based recommendation in all of stroke recovery. And when we're not active, we lose things like our flexibility, our strength, we have increased joint stiffness and reduced muscle mass, and overall just deconditioning and reduced stamina, which has a trickle-down effect, which affects really everything, function, cognition, mood, abilities in everyday life. There are two different types of vertigo or dizziness that we think of after a stroke. The first one is central, and the second one is peripheral. So central means that there is damage in the actual brain, which consists of what's happening in the cortex. And peripheral means it's happening outside of the central nervous system. So most people will have central for sure, but we can also see the influence of peripheral. So by peripheral, what I really mean are things related to neuropathy. So if your brain and your feet aren't in very good communication, you're also not getting really good feedback loops from the information of how your body is connected to space, which is often through our legs and our feet, back up to your brain. So basically that feedback loop is disconnected and it can add an additional burden to the cognitive system, the vestibular system. So what can cause central vertigo? Well, of course we said stroke. Um, this can even happen after some TIA, so people who haven't had official stroke damage. But what we can also see is that after a TIA, so a transient onset of cognitive, sensory, or physical symptoms, that people People are left with a feeling of just not feeling very secure in their body position in space and complaining, complaining of some type of post-stroke dizziness. So we think about how all of this integrates together as the vestibular system. So it is brain, it is ear, it is uh, proprioception, which is how our body is in space, and it's all the feedback that goes on continuously between body and brain. Central episodes of vertigo, so when it is primarily brain-based, these episodes can feel more intense than the peripheral and can leave the person unable to stand or walk without assistance. So peripheral tends to be a little bit more related to increased fall risk and a worsening of central, but if you are a stroke survivor, and you have dizziness, chances are it is mostly central, but then also you could, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, if you're of older age, if you have a feeling of numbness or fire, pins and needles in your feet, this can often be a sign that you also have some peripheral contributions. So what is most important, as is every brain health challenge, is that you start off with a comprehensive assessment. So when we're talking about post-stroke dizziness, neurologists do this, some physical therapists do this, and even audiologists have a role in contributing to our understanding of that entire vestibular system. 
This will help you to identify, my light's going in and out, this will help you to identify exactly what is causing the vertigo and then that dictates exactly where you need to go in your rehab. The assessment always provides the map for the treatment, which is the path through the forest to get to where you wanna go. So if it sounds like you need this, another easier way to ask for it is for a balance assessment, okay? And this typically includes a detailed clinical history. So when did you have your stroke? Where in your brain, if you know? How about your general medical conditions? And a big focus is on blood flow or circulation or vascular health. We also want to ask about medications because sometimes we can see a contribution there. And it requires an in-depth conversation about when exactly the symptoms started, how exactly they present themselves, how long do they last, what exacerbates them, and exactly what it is that is affected by the post-stroke dizziness. So it's very important how it is negatively impacting your life. You really want to think about exactly when it started so that would be onset and then you want to think about course over time there are clinical tests that we can use to determine if post-stroke dizziness is more central or more peripheral or if it has contributions from the peripheral these can be called balance plate testing so this is a brief test to identify if you are at increased risk for falling from dizziness so they put you on a board shake it up a little bit, basically uh, disrupt your equilibrium, and then see what you do. Do you fall off to the side? Or are you able to compensate? We can also uh, have non-invasive tests that look at the functioning of the inner ear because that can contribute to dizziness. Very important to have our ocular motor function evaluated. So this is our ability to use our eyes and follow a visual cue. We need to look at how your dizziness is uh, affected when you're in different body positions. So moving you on the exam table from laying down to sitting up, these can be important clues. And we also have something called caloric tests where we put warm and cold water into the inner ear to disturb, to, to determine the response of the vestibular system. A hearing evaluation is also key. So all of those things, it's more complicated than it seems, right? You put all of those things in as elements of the evaluation and you come up with the most accurate diagnosis. So you go from I'm dizzy to I have a primary central vestibular deficit that is exacerbated by a peripheral deficit. And now we have a target for treatment and we can develop a very personalized treatment plan. So one thing that is universal in all brain health challenges, whether it is dementia or a movement disorder or an attack tension disorder or a stroke or a traumatic brain injury is that there are layers that can contribute to the severity of how the problem is felt or experienced by the person. This is really in essence what neuropsychology does is our job is to identify the contributing layers and why that's so important is because if we can take away some of the layers, we can decrease the impact of the symptom on the person and their life. So with symptoms of post-stroke dizziness, with symptoms of vertigo, there are a few things that definitely make it worse. And you may have control over these things to more of an extent than you realize. The first one is fatigue. A lot of brain health challenges get worse when the person is pushed beyond their limit. And that is a really hard thing to adjust to because you've lived your entire life with a certain amount of mental and physical energy. And if a brain health challenge is sudden like a stroke, within an instant, all of a sudden your bandwidth, your capacity, your ability, your batteries in your brain are changed. And that is very difficult to get used to. So when we hit that wall at the end of the day, you know, at, at different uh, points before we used to get tired, a lot of things get worse. Our mood can get worse. We can be a lot more irritable, our ability to pay attention and word finding. Those are the three things that I definitely notice, but also symptoms of dizziness and vertigo. Uh, the other thing that can make this all worse is dehydration at any level. Even being 2% underwatered, underhydrated can result in cognitive and physical symptoms after a brain injury. If you feel overloaded, overwhelmed in any way, especially through sound or through bright lights, this can also make your dizziness worse. Any degree of anxiety, which of course is natural when you are 
potentially not feeling steady and might be risk at might be at risk for a fall alcohol cigarettes caffeine anything that might overstimulate the central nervous system shallow breathing right? Making sure that you're really taking in deep belly breaths as you're walking. That's important. And then hunger and low or high blood sugar. These are the biggest contributors when you look at the scientific research. One of the questions I always try to answer for you in these talks is prognosis. What can I expect if this is what I'm going through? Well, Unfortunately, with central related vestibular disorder, we do see it sticking around for quite some time. There are varying degrees of chronic symptoms because the brain's ability to coordinate this complicated system is not great. You can definitely feel better by getting the assessment and doing the targeted therapies and by minimizing any of those extras that I talked about before. The goal with this symptom is that correct evaluation and then learning how to compensate and learning how to take care of yourself so you're in the best position to compensate. So you want to reduce any of those contributing factors that might be exacerbating the symptom. The brain can definitely be taught how to use other senses. So in this case, vision and body position are the two most helpful substitutions. In terms of tips for dealing with this, it can really be a very stressful symptom. So please don't just medicalize it and think about it like a physical symptom. It also absolutely reduces our ability to concentrate and focus and can really be something that exacerbates um, our stress level and makes it hard for us to use good coping skills. You don't need a traumatic brain injury on top of a stroke to complicate your recovery. So I want you to take post-stroke dizziness very seriously and please advocate for yourself with your brain health specialist. I want you to be especially cautious if you take a blood thinner for any reason, which also includes aspirin because just a little bump to the head can easily result in a hemorrhage, which you do not need. So in terms of specific rehabilitation strategies, what you really wanna to try to find is a physical therapist who has expertise in vestibular rehab, balance therapy, post-stroke uh, sensory evaluation. Whatever the buzzword is for your local provider, you want to ask them if they know solution-focused techniques for helping people after they've had a stroke when they are struggling to feel steady in their body, to walk without feeling as if they're going to fall. There are three types of specific techniques that physical therapists who specialize in this use. The first one is called habituation. And what I mean by that is it is if you have a specific trigger that makes you feel dizzy. So for some people, leaning forward will always result in dizziness. Uh, for other people, it's visual busyness. So if they go to a mall or a grocery store and they are feeling overwhelmed by input, the goal of habituation is to repeatedly expose yourself to the very thing that is causing the dizziness. And I know that sounds very stressful, but it actually is a basic rule of brain health and psychology that the more we do something, the more we master it and the less stressed out we get by it. Over time, the intensity of your dizziness should decrease because the brain is then learning to ignore or habituate the abnormal signals that it is receiving. The next one is gaze stabilization. This can be really helpful for folks with brainstem issues. So this is learning how to control eye movements in order to reduce that inner feeling of vertigo or instability. And the last one is balance training. This is probably the most popular and the most helpful. So it's really used to compensate through other muscles in the body. So there's a big focus on the core and a lot of it is giving you prompts that might make you uh, dizzy or imbalanced. So maybe a little bit of a gentle push from behind and really thinking about strengthening those very specific, very small muscles in our legs, in our hips, and all the way up through our trunk and our core that can really keep us upright. So remember I said before, a big part of why post-stroke dizziness 
is so debilitating to people is because it makes us sedentary and then we really lose things like core strength, core flexibility, and core stamina. So a lot of this intervention is really improving your overall physical health and the ability to be well balanced as a means of compensating. And then when you're done with the official physical therapy, your job is to integrate these exercises into your everyday life because a lot of neuro rehabilitation is in the maintenance over time okay so here's what I want to know after I've done my part in this lecture is tell me about your experience with post-stroke dizziness in the comments I want to know what made it worse and what made it better and not only do I want to know this but I really believe that the comments on I care for your brain are often a big source of education and support for other people just like you who are living through a variety of brain health challenges. So if you have learned something, please don't keep it to yourself. It could really make a huge difference to someone else out there. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, um, spreading the word, sharing with any group or any people that you think it may help. We are here to provide science-based free brain health information so you can be your very best advocate because you deserve it. So take care and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.